This is the Game Sir F4 Falcon. Okay, coming in from Game Sir, this is a, a pretty pretty cool little device that I'm I'm quite excited about getting on my phone. This is the F4 Falcon mobile gaming controller. This allows you to game on the go. Uh, this grips around your phone, allowing you to game on the go securely and, and adds a few extra buttons to boot. So it's, it's plug and play, it's got customizable buttons and it works with both iOS and Android. So that's a pretty handy little novelty. You'll have to excuse my fingers. I know I've got a lot of plasters on, but uh, uh, we've got a new dog and it's a bit nippy at the moment. And I paid the price of that. <laughs> right. So going into this, obviously this is probably going to fit the largest of tablets and things. God, there's more designed for phones, but I, I especially want to see build quality and, and how things do. Right, so that's about everything that's in the box. Uh, it has a USB Type C charger cable. There is a rather attractive greetings card. Dear customer, thank you for giving us the opportunity to grow and foster and build the idea that was a mere thought. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It looks like some kind of drone that's going to attack you in a sci-fi movie. Uh, you've got uh, the L button that you're... Well, we'll get into it. And it's small. I was imagining it was going to be a wee bit bigger, come to think of it, but it is small. So we have the uh, the charge connector there uh, for the USB Type-C. Um, it opens up thusly. And then we have an L button, turbo, turbo and R. Uh, there's a bit of padding in there for the back of the phone. Some hooks here that uh, go down the screen. And you can see there's little pogo plugs there as well. And then this is a stretchy out elasticating or uh, adjustable uh, holder. So I have a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus here and I'm going to whip that in there with the case on. And it sits like that. And across the back too. So I'm thinking actually that this might be quite handy because whenever you're coupling your cupping your hand around the device, it can get quite hot, and this might actually allow a little bit of ventilation if your your fingers are on that, your plastered fingers are on that. Oh, we have life. So. Yeah, th this isn't so much a controller as adding left and right buttons. So I parted it on by <laughs> opening it. So you, you open it and it automatically powers on. There isn't actually a dedicated power button. It says remove case before use. Well, it seems to be alright with this case, I'm sure. Okay, so the one big game that uh, people are saying this is best for, and even the Amazon description lists, is PUBG. So, I have never played PUBG before. No, that's not true. I have played PUBG, I don't know, 10 years ago when it was first about, and people were talking about it. So, I'm, I'm just hitting create on whatever. Because I'm not going to invest much time in PUBG. We'll see what happens. Because this is probably the best way to check this. Or test this. And who knows. I might suddenly become addicted to it. And be unable to put it down. Okay, so... How do we get to the settings menu? <laughs> okay, so... What we've done is we've had to go in and configure the controls so that... The fire button is located up under the R. Which... Oh, 
Hang on. Ah. <laughs> I appear to have. Yeah, okay, so I need to work on that. I've now connected it so that the actual movement uh, is affected by that. Okay, so controls. So the left one seems to almost be working. It's a little bit <laughs> constant whenever you hit the button. We keep going. And I, I can't get it to stop, which is a bit of a pain. But then again, I don't understand how this, how these bindings are working, and someone's shooting at me, so I'm going to die anyway. It's a pity I can't go off and test this out on a server. I don't even know if they can hear me talking. They might be able to, the people who are playing this, so I'm probably just wrecking their game. I'll leave. Okay, so rather than messing up, someone else's game, I'm just going to play an offline single person shooter, Dead Trigger. It's an old game that I happen to know of. And I've set it up so that this is now the trigger. I can look around with this, move around with this, and then well, take that zombie out and reload with that. <laughs> so therefore, it's very handy. I'd forgotten that this game is actually quite fun. Uh, it, it really does help playing first-person shooters on uh, on a mobile device, adding in two extra buttons. I haven't quite f got the function of the turbo just yet, uh, because that's only the first sort of introductory level of Dead Trigger, and I'm just chuffed that I got it to work after, um, after PUBG. So obviously it's the way I set up PUBG. I'm sure it works if people know that game. Uh, then they're going to be able to get a, a better experience than what I have because it's ridiculously complicated whenever you look at the customization of the controls. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, go for it. Just uh, go play. And we'll see what the turbo buttons are. I can't imagine that turbo is going to be terribly useful. We don't want turbo reloading. Oh, okay, so where you can add a little bit of pressure to a button, you can refine it so that I'm holding this down and it's almost like I'm tapping it, getting one shot. it again and we're on to orange and we're getting a slightly faster shot like I'm pressing the button faster and again another speed and then up to full speed by turning it off so that's our regular shot I quite like that idea. I might actually play this for a wee while longer off camera because it does seem to be kind of a fun idea. Um, then for platformers and things like that you can use that to jump whenever you're running and jumping rather than having to find the button that's on the screen. That's the one problem I've always had with mobile gaming is that you sometimes realize you're tapping in the wrong area because you're so engrossed in what's happening on the screen you might have misjudged your thumb and missed the jump or what have you. So having a physical button to press is the big bonus here. And then that turbo allows for uh, a, a different speed at which you're tapping something. I'm quite impressed with this actually, I really am. Um, I, I kind of like it, it's really small, really quite dinky, easy to throw in your pocket. Um, it requires charging, and I'm not entirely sure how long one battery will last, but then it'll depend on how often you game. I've got a funny feeling you may be picking it up like me um, and finding that gaming, or it, it, it's out of charge because it's been, maybe been a month since you last used it. But yeah, I, I, I'm kind of liking this. I, I like the way that it sits pronounced from the back as well uh, to 
help with maybe some heat issues. It gives a constant flow of air through here where your hands may have been cupping that area as you went. It is a wee bit intrusive when if you need to go and do something. I was finding it quite difficult to use it with it attached. I have this kind of typical uh, foam case, um, which didn't actually make much of a difference to uh, to the unit. I just thought I'd, I'd remove it anyway, just to uh, decrease the profile of it. But it, it still worked with that attached. So yeah, this is renewed my interest in doing a little bit of mobile gaming. I'm looking forward to seeing what it does on other games that I might play. I'm trying to think of what I... I do tend to play more puzzly games, but this might open up the opportunity with uh, with Play Pass. I'll download a bunch of other games and see how they go. Having it... I was thinking about 1942 or something like that where you're playing like this, but I don't... That would probably work if you, as long as you can customize the controls and move them to the area that they're, that these buttons are going to be in. You could technically use that bottom button. I don't know. That might be a bit. <laughs> I'm thinking a bit too much about this, I suppose. But yeah, for uh, for first person shooters and the likes of Fortnite or PUBG or whatever you happen to play, that you can customize the buttons with. This gives you a nice option. Uh, for two of those buttons, hardware buttons, and I, I'd love to be able to think that you could, oh, you, I suppose you couldn't even configure that to f switch between different variables. For example, if you were to shoot with that and then need the sniper scope or something like that, being able to hit that to change your, whilst it changes the firing rate, I, I don't know how you would go about actually changing that to changing your firing stance unless there's a, a particular button for that which you could put to that but yeah it's it's an old-fashioned thing that they've done uh, joysticks used to come with turbo buttons years ago that allowed you to turn on auto fire and things like that on your master system or amstrad cpc or something so yeah i i really do quite like this um i'm going to use it i'm going to play with it for a wee while longer today and see see what happens the stickers there is actually a wee bit squiff. But yeah, it's it's plastic, that's true. But it costs 30 quid, which might be a bit much for some people. There's a QR code on the bottom there, so you can see how to do things. Obviously, you lose your instructions or you can't get access to the internet. Well, you need the internet to use that QR code, yeah. So, uh, grand! If you're a dedicated gamer who, who needs their PUBG on the go and that sort of thing, then this is the thing that you need! So if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to look at in particular, let me know in the comments box down below. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. And remember to tune in to the Tech Addicts podcast on a Sunday afternoon. And then, of course, to inspect your gadget on Talk Sport every Wednesday morning at half past midnight. And other than that, take care. <laughs>